So I was curious based on training frequency, whether I'm training every day or every other day or two days on three break, three days on break, you know, and what I'm doing now, I thought was interesting. Um, if I do, so if I do, I basically just train every day, but then I realized if I'm training, um, 15 days with one break, my rotation is 5.3 days. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. So if I bring it down to 10 days with one break on the 11th day, my training frequency is 5.5. So I am, I'm only lo losing 0.2 on a rotation. So I'm working out that same muscle every 5.5 days instead of 5.3 days, really probably mm -hmm. negligible, maybe not even noticeable over the long term. but I'm giving myself 33% more breaks because instead of 15 days, I'm taking that 10 days, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then if I bring it down to five days, a break every five days, then we go to uh, five days and then a break, then we go to six. Now I'm training the same muscle every six days. So that's now we're at 0.5. Now that's could be kind of a difference. So what I, what I'm, the question is in terms of long-term training, is there, I think you're not a fan of rest weeks, but is there a, ideal training frequency in terms of how many breaks you should take, whether it's every five days, every 10 days, every 15 days, every other day, is there a ideal answer for, for that? How often you should be taking breaks from the gym? So the, it, it doesn't actually matter that much, whether you take rest days or, or in, in general, even how you distribute it across the week, the relevant metric, the most relevant metric, uh, like we just discussed, training times can matter, but the most relevant metric is the number of work sets that you do per week per muscle group. So when you, that, that's the most reliable quantitative estimate, because if you're looking at the number of rest days, for one, that's, that's not an accurate representation of your rest time, because if you, like I train every day full body, and then it may seem like, oh, you, your muscles have no rest. But actually, my muscles have 23 hours of rest for every hour that I train. So my work to rest ratio, if you formulate it that way, is one to 23. And your, your muscles don't care if it's a rest day, or at least your biceps doesn't care if you have a rest day. It just cares about whether you're training your biceps again, right? That determines if it's being stressed again or if it can recover, etc. So in the end, it's best to just look at what happens to your total weekly sets per muscle group. Okay. And... Yeah, you will, you will run into the issue of diminishing returns. So you can, you, the way you formulated it, you, you saw it based on the ratio of, well, if I cut one day, then I get a lot more rest, but it doesn't affect my gains that much. And that's true. And another way to formulate it in the way in the metric I used, like sets per week, we see that, yeah, as an advanced individual, probably when you go over 10 sets per week per muscle group, the, you don't get that much extra muscle by adding say five sets per week per muscle group, but it's 50% more work. And then if you go another five sets, then you're at a hundred percent extra work. And it, the difference that in the additional gains that you get is even smaller. Now, the flip side of that is that this assumes that you're making gains to begin with at 10 sets per week. And like in your case, if you're an advanced individual, you have to do pretty much everything right to gain any muscle then you're at a certain point often where you, there is, there, you don't, you're not talking about percentages. There is only gains, yes or no. So there's just a certain volume of, that you need to make any gains. And then maybe you can squeeze out a little bit more gains, but probably like this, this optimum curve, you know, you can look at it that way. Like most people in beginner has this optimum curve, right? So you increase the volume is inverted U. So they start training and they do a bit more and then they get more gains, more gains, more gains, but diminishing returns and there's like optimum. And if they start training more then actually the gains start to decrease because they're overtraining. And at some point they will not gain anything because they're just barely recovering from one workout to the next. And there's no time for the body to actually gain net muscle. Now, in, as a very advanced individual, this, this, this U curve that you have is so if it's, if it's like this, it's just completely suppressed because your gains are going to be so minimal. So you are basically here, which means at this point, you make gains at this point, this whole area of the curve, you make no gains. 
and then the whole area above it, you also make no gains. So this, there's just a very fine window of making any progress at all. Okay, I get that. So basically um, what I'm saying is you can cut, you can cut work up to a point, but at a certain point, you'll just, you won't gain anymore. And that is, so the, the I guess the question I have though is, so you, you, you mentioned 10 sets per week per muscle. I can imagine that's really general. Some people were just born for weightlifting and they can handle 35 sets a week. Other people, maybe six. Um, so my question is how I want to avoid injury. That's number one, avoid injuries. Number one gains is number two. I think you probably agree with that. How do I avoid injury in terms of, of course there's the right mechanics, but in terms of rest, um, if you recall last year around this time, I did a really stupid schedule over training, going to the gym twice a day, overworking my shoulder. And one day, you know, after two months, it got a little tear. So I want to, what I'm trying to real, what I'm trying to figure out is, okay, so you gave me this 10 sets per week per muscle. Um, but I think that's a bit, like I said, I think that's very general for me. It could be eight. Mm-hmm. It could be 28. Yeah. So how, how can I know for me specifically, is there kind of a formula where I would know, okay, one rest every five days is, is good or every 10 days is good. There's no way to know unless you actually start doing it and tracking your progress. So I think like my initial estimate is the, what the program I created for you, what, what a couple of years ago now, uh, and it was pretty high, I think, because I thought very advanced trainee, we're going to have hard time building muscle. We need a lot of calories, a lot of volume. That's typically how it is. Like you get very advanced training, you just need a lot to make anything happen, especially if you want maximum gains. I don't think you're particularly in, in, uh, injury sensitive. So you, you basically what you want to do is you want to look at like the volume you were doing when you did get injured. And I think that was for your shoulder specifically very high. Like if you would count the front delt volume, you would count all the overhead pressing, all the lateral raises, all the horizontal pressing, all the chest work. So that's a lot of sets. And then any, I don't know if you were doing the handstand stuff and the like, the, all of that also counts. Dips, all of that also counts. So that's, that was probably a lot of volume. So you know that's definitely too high. And we have an indication that the volume we were doing is seems, seems doable. And you have an indication of you, you've done some lower training program, lower volume training programs in the meantime. If you were making consistent strength gains and you could see you had a pretty decent idea in your data that there's also muscle growth, even if you lost it again while cutting, which seems to be a big problem. But at least you could see that there, there were gains, then you have an idea of, okay, that's sort of minimum effective probably. So yeah, then you get an idea of this is too much. This is what seems enough to make any gains and this is workable. So somewhere here is probably where you want to be. Okay. It's a, it's a very long-term process to really figure out what like, the <laughs> optimal volume is for one individual. It sounds like you have to injure yourself too to figure that figure out the upper limit. <laughs> it, it helps. It actually helps. <laughs> but in, injury doesn't necessarily mean because there's also a technique and just shit happens. Yeah, man. But it, it's an indication for sure. Okay. So related to that resting period, um, one minute would be too short. We're starting at two minutes. This is to gain muscle two minutes, you know, you can switch out more is better for sure. Um, and how you do that is rotating exercises. Um, do they have, if you rotate exercises, should it be like chest and then like calves, like totally different, or can it be chest and even try and then triceps? So you want to look at what happens to your total work and most people can be a lot more aggressive, I found, even because I'd be hesitant for, for example, shoulder pulls, lateral raises, um, and actually even those are still pretty doable. Chin-ups and deadlifts, those, those are ex- where it's like, hmm, you, you lose a little bit of volume, but you gain a lot in time efficiency. But uh, yeah, calf and biceps, that's that's for sure. You can, you can do that. That's and ideal. even like chest back, for example, bench press chin-ups, that's in fact been found to increase work capacity in some research due to antagonist um, um, inhibition. So you can actually be a little bit stronger when you're doing an exercise after you fatigued the, um, the antagonist.